All right, in this video, we'll analyze the transformation of dilation, a transformation for which we simply couldn't guess the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. But now, with the help of component spaces, we won't have any trouble doing so. You should probably review the earlier videos that we recorded on this transformation before watching this one. All right, so we will work with the dilation transformation and we will make the full journey of picking a basis representing this linear transformation with respect to the chosen basis, which will be this one, finding the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the resulting matrix, and then translating the component space answers into polynomials. So we will use this basis, which is perfect for our purposes. We can call it the standard basis for the space of polynomials. And now let's construct the matrix that represents this linear transformation. And of course it is constructed one column at a time by decomposing each of the basis elements, by performing the transformation on each of the basis elements and decomposing the result with respect to the same basis. So of course one becomes one because the transformation is plug in two X minus one whenever you see X. So there's no X in one, so it remains one. And now decomposing this constant polynomial with respect to this basis, of course, results in 1, 0, 0. So we're done with the first column of the matrix. 1, 0, 0. Second one, x, by the very definition, becomes 2x minus 1. And the components of this vector with respect to this basis are minus 1, 2, 0. So far, so good. Minus 1, 2, 0. And finally, x squared becomes x minus 1, excuse me, becomes 2x minus 1 squared, which is of course 4x squared minus 4x plus plus 1. And the components are 1, negative 4, 1. 1, negative 4, 1. 1, negative 4, 1. And we're done with the first step, which is representing the linear transformation by a matrix with respect to the chosen basis. We can now, for the moment, forget where this matrix came from and simply study the matrix and find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors according to the matrix eigenvalue algorithm. And of course, excuse me, four. <laughs> four. And of course, it's an upper triangular matrix and its eigenvalues appear on the diagonal. So the three eigenvalues are lambda 1, which is 1, lambda 2, which is 2, and finally lambda 3, which is 4. I wonder what we would have in the, in the case of cubic polynomials when this matrix becomes 4 by 4. Would the next one be 8? And are we looking at powers of 2 here? A very interesting question. All right, let's start with this one. Well, in this case, should we call it P1 or V1? Let's V1. Let's just concentrate on the matrix. V1, uh, of course, 1 is alone in its column, and it's on the diagonal, so it's 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And looking ahead just a little bit, this eigenvector will correspond to the constant polynomial 1, which I believe we knew from before was an eigenvector of this transformation corresponding to the eigenvalue 1. And it's obvious right here, too. The output is exactly the same as the input, so it's an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue of 1. Now, lambda equals 2. So we now have to subtract 2 from the diagonal, so this will require a little bit of work. So we'll do that work right here. Okay, and subtracting 2 from the diagonal results in minus 1, 0, 2, and the rest is the same. Minus 1, 1, negative 4, and I see right here it's 1 and minus 1. 1, minus 1, 0. So V2 equals 1, minus 1, 0. On to the last one, which equals 4. Once again, we need to subtract 4 from the diagonal, so we have minus 3, minus 2, 0. 
on the diagonal, and then minus 1, 1, negative 4. Okay, this will require a little bit of work, but we can see looking at the last two columns, sometimes putting in the zeros is helpful, that taking the last two columns in proportion of negative 1, excuse me, negative 2 and 1, negative 2 and 1, will take care of the second entry. Okay, that's good. So now we have 1 plus 2, 3, and that's minus 3. So we have to take 1 of the first column to find a vector in the null space. So V3 equals 1, 1, negative 2, 1. Okay, an exciting moment because we're done with our component space analysis. All right, like I was saying, we're done with our component space analysis. So we're about to reveal the eigenfunctions of the actual transformation. So we know that this one corresponds to one. So let's just write it. We can erase all of this. And we now have that P1 of X equals one. Now from this one, we have to take one of the first one minus one of the second one. So it's one minus X. And why don't we write it as x minus 1? p2 of x equals x minus 1. Because any vector from the eigenspace can represent its space. x minus 1. And finally, this one, which is minus 1. Excuse me, what am I saying? 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So p3 of x, here we go. A polynomial that we couldn't have guessed or at the very least didn't guess previously, plus one. So this is a very exciting moment. We now have our eigenfunctions with the help of the component space, something that we couldn't do before, we did rather easily now. So this right here is the utility and let's say power of component spaces. And actually now looking at these polynomials, we understand perfectly well what the pattern is because this last polynomial is actually x minus 1 squared. So when you look at x minus 1 and you perform this transformation on it, instead of x minus 1, it becomes 2x minus 1 minus 1. So it becomes 2x minus 2. This goes to 2x minus 2, which of course is 2 times x minus 1. So that's why it's an eigenfunction corresponding to the eigenvalue 2. And with this expression, you can plug in 2x minus 1 for x when it's in this form. And it'll be this thing squared. So 2 will get squared. And that's, and that's why the output for this input will be 4 times the function itself. And now we see what would happen in the space of cubic, fourth order, and higher order polynomials. These functions, the next one will be x to the 1, x minus 1 cubed, because when you take that expression and plug in 2x minus 1 for x, you'll have the same sort of thing happening in the, inside the parentheses, and then 2 will come out, get raised to the third power, so indeed the next eigenvalue will be 8 and then 16, and the corresponding eigenvectors are functions of the polynomials of this form. But, we, we're, but we're only this smart now. This is not what we saw before. Before we were just at a loss for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But with the help of component spaces, we didn't have any problem at all. So I hope that this has demonstrated the power of component spaces to you and that you enjoyed this video.